Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Stott and I'm the Emperor of Stemeria. Today we're going to be discussing how Stemeria is working towards becoming a sovereign state. nations are built and empires are forged. nation that becomes integrated into the empire, for every territory that we acquire, for every citizen that joins us, for every drop of water we collect, for every seed that we sow, for every watt of energy we produce, for every silver bar that we stamp, we are securing our future. So before we get started in discussing how Sumeria is working towards becoming a sovereign state, we first need to discuss what it means to be sovereign. The dictionary definition of sovereignty is supreme power or authority. It means that a government possesses full control over the affairs within a territorial or geographical area. So right off the bat, we can dismiss the common misconception that sovereignty goes hand in hand with recognition. A state does not need to be recognised by others in order to be legitimate. A prime example of this would be China, or more officially, the People's Republic of China, and Taiwan, more officially, the Republic of China. There are more than a dozen states, all members of the UN, that don't recognise the government of the People's Republic of China as a legitimate authority over all of China. That title belongs to the government of the Republic of China, also known as Taiwan. Now, this was pretty much the status quo until 1971, when the UN opted to recognise the government of the People's Republic of China over the Republic of China. So, not only does the government of the People's Republic of China not recognise the government of the Republic of China and vice versa, but there are many states across the world that also don't recognise one or the other as the legitimate government of the entirety of China. And this hasn't detracted from their ability to function as sovereign states. Both the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China, or to put it simply, both China and Taiwan, are operating as sovereign entities, as sovereign states, with their own governments, their own territory, their own population, and more besides. The opinions of those outside of those states is relevant. They exist regardless. But even this idea that sovereignty relates to a supreme power or supreme authority over the state is very flawed and comes with a lot of caveats. First, the government of any state is often restricted by what it can and cannot do, by forces that are outside of its control. This might be pre-existing regulations, conventions, laws or constitutions. There are also practical limitations in terms of what a government 
can do. This might be because of public opinion, it might be because of financial restraints, it might be because that government is reliant on another state to provide its particular resources or protection, and it might be because the reactions of those states might be hostile if the government acts in a particular way. Leading on from that, there are limitations because of international law or membership of international organisations. These often strip a government of its ability to govern its nation, its state, as it sees fit. The point that I'm trying to make is that simply having a government within a state does not guarantee that that government is going to have supreme power or supreme authority. And there are plenty of examples of this. You can look at the US Constitution or the EU Parliament, both of which are restricting governments from acting as they see fit. Nevertheless, if we take this as a starting point, with sovereignty referring to a government of a state which has the ability to actually govern that state, albeit with limitations, then Stemeria is already on that path. So if we consider all of the limitations that I've just mentioned, then we can also consider the limitations that the UK Parliament imposes upon us just as the UK Parliament imposes limitations on the Welsh Assembly, on the Scottish Parliament, or the Northern Irish Assembly, or how the EU Parliament imposes limitations on the member states that makes up the European Union. So when the UK Parliament comes up with a law, we have to abide by that law. That is just reality. But we do nevertheless live in an extremely free part of the world, where there is an established framework for us to work within, and it is our job to push the limits of what we can do within that framework, and that is exactly what Stemeria is doing. Practically speaking, if money was no object, there would be nothing to stop us from acquiring vast tracts of land across the British Isles that we could utilise for a wide range of reasons. This might be housing, it might be manufacturing, it might be agriculture, it might be forestry, it might be energy, or whatever else. Now, if we add into that equation people voluntarily becoming a part of Stemeria in the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the tens of thousands, and they're living in Stemerian homes, they're working in Stemerian industries, they're eating Stemerian food, they're drinking Stemerian water, they're using Stemerian energy, they're obeying the code of conduct, the rules, the regulations, the laws, that the state within Stemeria, the government within Stemeria, is imposing on the population and we are paying our dues to the UK government, the minimum that's required in order to acquire the benefits that that provides. Now take all of that in consideration and tell me how that is different from any other state in the world. People can and will deny that we exist. People will deride us and mock us as fantasists. People will declare that we are not a sovereign entity, but as I said earlier in this video, and much is the same for many of the states, sovereign or otherwise, in the world today, we still exist, and we are taking practical, pragmatic steps in securing our future. And nothing is going to stop this. No amount of moaning from the sidelines, no amount of internet trolls, no amount of people saying that it can't be done is going to stop us from doing it, because we are doing it. We are already taking steps towards accomplishing our goals. This might be through the acquisition of private freehold land that's being utilised to produce our own energy, to grow our own food, to supply our own water. It might be the establishment of our own monetary system, the recruitment of citizens, the integration of other communities into our empire. This is all taking place now, and it's only going to ramp up as time goes on. Within the next few years in particular, our focus is on the development of Stemerian industries and the acquisition of additional land, which may yet include our first dwellings. And this is all being accomplished not with major financial backing or power or influence behind it, but just by ordinary people who share a vision of the future, that share the ideals of trying to establish a new society, a new civilization, a new nation, a new state within the modern world. And so if you wanted to become a part of that, if you wanted to show your support for Stemeria, then please feel free to give this video a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.